All right, guys, welcome back. It's Fausto again with part three about how to use the book viewer on NASDAQ and how to compare it to other platforms that are out there. I mean, book viewer is not the only platform out there, but it is the most popular one. So a lot of people like to get it and review it. If you see in some of my other videos, you probably notice that we, we really stress using the uh, book viewer because this is where the level three is. It's where all the market makers are. This is where they place all the orders. Actually, it's where you see a lot of the high frequency trading. And if you haven't noticed watching New York Stock Exchange, there's really nobody down there anymore. Everything is electronic now. So the question is, where are these orders are? Where are they coming from? So what we're looking at right now is we're looking at the book viewer. And if you notice from part two that I just did, I kind of showed you how to more customize it and how I like it and how you should be viewing it. And most importantly, what we should be focusing on, on what's called the iceberg orders on the on the book viewer now what i have over here i'm going to bring this over here on the left so just give me a second put this over here and i'm going to bring over a um a platform that's pretty popular we use here at cyber university it's called the uh the trade station platform and you're looking at the new version of 10.0 and i want to kind of like compare and show you a little bit of how we utilize it because i want to use the charts on the uh, on the trade station platform, and I want you to compare their book viewer versus um, how what they call their matrix version of it. Now, once again, uh, let me just bring over the stock. You can see it right here. Here's the book viewer right here, and um, you know, it, it, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to bring up a stock. Let me see, like for example, looking at the stock symbol uh, JD, right? Now, JD is a stock that's you know it's up today a little bit. It's up about five percent. Um, you got about close to about, uh, what time is it now? It's about uh, almost one o'clock in the afternoon here, here in New York on the, on the East Coast. And uh, JD is up, you know, trade about 27 million shares almost. So stock is pretty active today. And this is a little bit more of a brand name stock. You, you know, the problem when you're dealing with a little bit of these brand name stocks, you can't really see as much as you, you would like. Now, right here in the middle, you probably heard of this. It's called Level 2. Now, Level 2 has been outdated personally since the 90s. NASDAQ was really trying to get rid of it a long time ago but apparently they haven't uh it looks great it looks cool and i did a video on level two so you're more than happy to learn a little bit more about that i don't use level two because it's completely outdated uh you don't really see all the orders out there you're only basically seeing the best bid and best offer out there so it's one of the reasons why a lot of people you know like i said brokerage firms give it to you for free and that's all it's worth now when you look over here on the right this is basically called uh the matrix now i'm going to bring the book the the i'm going to show you the big difference between the the book viewer and the matrix now the matrix um the, when you're dealing with more of a professional platform and when you're somebody like me a day trader you have to um you just can't depend on where you'll see just one market, one order. There are other ECNs out there. Now, ECNs, once again, are abbreviated electronic communication network, which allows you to become a market maker. Now, if you look over here on the, on the level two, there are a few ECNs out there. There's a Cincinnati exchange, there's BATS, there's EGGX, there's a New York Stock Exchange. So there are multiple ECNs. They're just not the book viewer. Now, when you're looking at the book view, unfortunately, you're only looking at one book. Um, it is a very popular book. A lot of people use it. You'll see a lot of big orders out there. But when you're looking at a stock like this and you're looking at these orders, like, for example, if we're looking all the way down here, uh, for example, let's see, um, $29.19. So you got about what? close to 17,000 shares. If you go over here and you look right here at 20 uh, at 29 uh, 19, which is what we were just looking at, those orders are pretty much the same. So you basically looking at those orders actually this one's moving a little bit quicker but those orders are pretty much the same right there. It looks like there's one order a little bit higher uh, on this one. So it looks like there's a it looks like all the orders that are that are on the book viewer are actually on the um uh on um on here so but uh on uh, the 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 uh matrix i apologize now but look over here at 2912 you see it says a thousand shares well guess what there's more than a thousand there's five thousand there's four thousand you said number trading two thousand so there's actually more orders 
that are trading at these levels than the ones above. So when you're looking at it and you look at a book viewer and say, well, there's really there's only 1,100 shares looking to be sold at the best offer. That's really not true. There's actually more orders because there are more markets out there. So that is really the big issue about you know, you, you know, when you're looking at the book viewer, it's a great tool. It's got some great features, but you're not always seeing all the orders that are out there. And that could cause a big issue when it comes to trading in today's market. So that that's where that comes. Now, let me look at uh, look at show you something a little bit um, a stock that we basically traded today. And um, I don't know if you guys saw a stock. This is what would us day traders look at. We look at a stock like, if you look over here on the left-hand side, um, there was a big runner up today, uh, BPTH. This is what day traders basically trade. And this stock, um, if you notice, which is kind of shocking, it ran from $2.50 here in, in the morning hours. And within an hour and a half, um, a little bit more up to about 1130 stock ran almost all the way up to eight dollars and fifty cents now some of us probably never even seen or been in a stock like this but here at cyber train diversity this is basically what we trade all day long we look for stocks uh, like these with these really big moves and uh, we basically day trade them and you know and and but how do we know what's going up see that's what people always ask how do you know what's going up well remember one thing how do stocks go up and go down supply and demand and when you're looking at this chart over here and this is an intraday chart up on top and this is a, a daily chart on the right and if you notice us day traders we don't use indicators okay we keep it very simple the problem with indicators is they're laggers you know and if you're watching an indicator by the time you figure it out you're usually too late it works for swing trading option trading forks but if you are a day trader we were never taught ever to use indicators uh because once again you're always one step behind and plus there's so many out of uh, so many of them out there our number one indicator really is just following the money so I'm going to bring up the stock right here, and um, when you're dealing with something that's not so much of a brand name stock, because this is what day traders do, we look for stocks like this. Now, if you look at um, this BPTH, it was a big, big winner, and um, you know, stock uh, had some really big moves. And if you scroll down, what we're looking for is uh, we're looking for big, big orders, and you can see that we got 5,000 share orders. 2,000 share orders at these prices, and when you look it up over here on the right, you know, you're obviously getting more. You're getting, you're getting 5,000, you're getting, um, on the bid, you're getting, let me bring this down, you're getting 2,300, so you're getting some, um, you know, you're getting some pretty decent orders. You're not going to see a lot of these orders in here. Uh, right here on the, on the bid and ask, you'll notice that they're, you know, 1,000 shares, 500, and it's changing pretty rapidly. Uh, a thousand just came in. You're not seeing that on the book viewer. So the book viewer not only is a little bit more delayed because you got a browser base and you could see when you're dealing with more of a professional platform, you're getting the data a lot quicker, but you're seeing a lot more orders out there. Now, here's another stock. Um, us day traders also uh, were having a lot of fun trading. And uh, there was a stock, NH. This one ran, well, this actually, you know what? A little on the cheaper side. I want to show you something too cheap. Uh, that was moving, but uh, this one was actually a little bit easier to trade. Uh, LX uh, LXRX. Now, if you notice this one right here, you got orders. You got two thousand. You got four thousand. And let me just put it on the book on, on the book viewer. LXRX is typing it in over here. And you could see that when you're looking at these orders, um, the 1,000, the 700, you're not seeing them up on the top of the best bid and best ask. Uh, so really kind of just you know wondering, well, is this going up? Is it going down? Well, first of all, it's right smack in the middle of the day. Um, so really, there's not much going on. But this stock, if you see it, it really had a really big run. It ran from 560 to about 680. Think about it. If you bought 1,000 shares of that stock, you know, do that every day. You make, you know, on the average more than a buck a day. There's your quarter million dollar salary. That's why people love day trading. But why did the stock is stopping? How do stocks hit resistance levels? Well, the big thing is looking at these iceberg orders out there, looking for bigger blocks. Like here's a 5,000 share seller. You could see here at 702, you know, um, why, 
Why would it stop at 702? You know, why is there a big order out there? And if you look over here, you see how you have a double top right there uh, on the intraday? That re that resistance level is right there. Why well, I had a tough time breaking it because it was getting close to that big seller out there um, at, at 707. Remember, how do stocks go up and down? Supply and demand. So once again, let's just get back to the book viewer and, and, and the, um, the matrix. The big difference is that when you're trading – you know, and you and you want to know what's going up and what's going down. You have to follow the money. You got to know where the buyers are. You have to know where the sellers are. You got to know where they are. And the only thing I could do that is level three. And because the book viewer is a very popular item and, you know, and some of you might have a platform that might not offer it. That's why it's so important to always do your homework on a brokerage firm. There are a lot of good brokerage firms out there, but they don't always give you the right tools depending what kind of trade you are. But as a day trader, you know, we do use the book viewer a lot um, because – we deal with people all over the world, and not everyone can have the luxury of having a certain platform, maybe due to margin requirements, maybe maybe because they have, they have this brokerage for, certain brokerage firms are not in their area. Um, I know we have people that have issues up in Singapore and, and uh, Australia, Canada. You know, U.S., you're pretty much limited. You know, you're basically unlimited. But also, you got to be careful because a lot of them don't always give you the tools. So what I recommend you to do is um, if your brokerage firm doesn't have – the uh, a level three version, an aggregated version, we can have multiple ECNs. That's okay. You go to NASDAQ Book Viewer. You can use it temporarily. Um, it works perfectly fine. You're just not going to see every single order out there, but you're going to get a lot. You're going to get a lot. So, um, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. You, hopefully you started it from part one and worked your way up to part two and part three and get to a little bit more about it. And if you want to know more about it, if you, if you want to know more about seeing real live Big monster iceberg orders. I'm talking about monsters. I'm talking about 50,000, 100,000 share orders. Just click on the bottom, like us, register for one of our events. We do an event here every week, and I'll be happy to show you. Because you know what, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fellow YouTubers and, 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 and traders and online traders, I, I just – we don't – you know, there's no reason why you should lose money in the market. You just got to know how to play the game. And that's why I enjoy teaching people because, you know – I do events all over and I see people getting in positions and they had, they spend all this money on software and, and then, uh, and they just blow up their accounts. You know, if you knew the first time how to do it, you wouldn't have that issue. And the biggest thing is you just got to follow the money and the only way you can follow the money is using level three. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching this video. Um, click on the bottom, like us, and we'll have more videos like this where I'll start teaching you how to read charts, keeping it simple, seeing more iceberg orders, how to use something called time and sales and all that good stuff. Thanks, everyone.